Today, today, we remind, we remind K Street, K Street, and Wall Street, and Wall Street, that America, that America, and the world, and the world, are citizens, are citizens, and not, and not corporations, corporations. We stand up, we stand up to say no, to say no to foreclosures, to foreclosures, to student loans, to student loans. That the corporations put on to us, put on to us every single day. Every single day. We are, we are Occupy, Occupy, and so are you. And, and so are you. you. Right, bring it on. Bring it back to us. Hold on, I got it. Grab the other pole! Grab the other pole! Grab the other pole! This must be a homeland security operation. What do you think is going to happen? What's your I, bet? I, I don't know. I think the uh, the police are going to come and uh, make a mess of things. Take that tent down, right? I don't know. That's what, what do you think? They do. Uh, that's what they said they do, and they, they, they can't back down, right? That's right. I think they're going to clear the tents out and see what happens. So hopefully it doesn't get too ugly. What do you think Occupy should do now? I think they should come back every day. Get rid of the tents and come back every day. Don't give up the fight. And right? to you, what would the fight be? What's the most important issue that concerns you? I think it's the uh, fair taxation. And uh, right, honey, what do you think? It's my wife. What do you think? I agree. Do you think they do? All right. Fair taxation. So, how so? What's unfair about the taxation? 15% for the rich people over a million bucks. It's not. It's not good. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen today? I don't know. Waiting for the cops to show up We're to find out. To find out. <laughs> it's like waiting for a car accident or something. It is. Yeah. It is. What do you think Occupy should do? I don't know. I think. What do you put? <laughs> Put up a big dramatic showdown. That's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> do you do work nearby? Yeah, two blocks yeah, away. Right up there. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's some effects that have come out of this whole thing. 
such as? Well, in the media, there's more attention on the 1% idea now. Yeah. The idea that bigger corporations have bigger influence over uh, legislation. Tremendous job. What do you think is going to happen today? What do, you, what, do you, what do you want to happen? Well, I don't think anything's going to happen until tonight, quite honestly. I think you're right. They'd be yeah. stupid to try to do it now. Exactly. So, that's my opinion. Right. And then, like, what do you think of the Occupy? <laughs> well, I like the principle in general. What is that principle in general? Because some people say, oh, they don't have any general principles. Well, I think it's about just the way our system screwed up, plain and simple. The one part I don't like is, you know, some of them are talking about communism. Communism doesn't work. But in general, just the part about, you know, this system is really screwed up. So how do you distinguish? I mean, it sounds like you'd be more towards the Tea Party than to the... No, I'm not for the Tea Party. You don't blame it on the government, you blame it on corporations. Is that, do you think that's the difference? No, I blame it on government. Absolutely. Corporate greed, though, well, too. Yeah, but Absolutely. it's government. Government's supposed to be there to and take care of things, and instead issue. of well, I think it has to do with who's the corruptors of government. Right. Is it the government that corrupts the corporations, or is it the corporations that have so much influence that they corrupt the governing process by buying politicians and getting their own laws written? Well, it's still to me, it's the government. The government's supposed to take care of those things. You know, they're supposed to have laws, and I think they worry about too many other things where you can build this or not build this, or you can't park here or whatever. There's too many stupid rules. The well, government a, should, in theory, be the one. The government is the people, correct? Yeah, we the, the people. people. The government is the, uh, the whole system the got established by only just a handful of very powerful families who, you know, then established this whole system. Now, in this last uh, cycle, of ups and downs, we're down now. How did you fare? Your family, you, your finances? Oh, we got hit hard. You Absolutely. Hit. Yeah. And because because the government didn't put it, regulations in place, they should have. They were worrying about other things. They were worrying about a war we probably shouldn't have even been in. How do you think this is going to end? What's going to happen? To who? Who censored something? Yeah. No, it was not. Well, I'm sorry, were you asking me? Oh, yes, I was wondering how you thought this would end. December. In right. December. Yeah. They'll be removed the decisions whether they'll go peacefully right. or not. But this is, this is absurd. It's a fault, among other things, of that subcommittee of the U.S. House that insisted on holding hearings and insisted that they knew better than park police how to handle this. They wanted them out of the park. It was the Republican members who wanted them out of the park, and it's a disgrace. The park police were handling this just well himself. So how do you feel about the Occupy movement? I think it's terrific. Why? Because, <laughs> may I tell you why? I'll, I'll speak for myself. Uh, I have written letters, perfectly decent letters, to every member of Congress. I have visited almost all offices of members of Congress. I have held signs outside Obama's office and the Capitol, and I have been arrested over and over and over again, and it does no good. I stand with these people. How do you want this thing to end? What do you think is going to happen? Uh, uh, probably not going to be pretty. I don't know what, but um, hopefully it doesn't turn out like Oakland. <laughs> what do you think the impact has been of some of this thing? Um, you know, I, I think there's pluses and minuses to it. Um, you know, it's brought awareness to a lot of the causes. I think now it's probably bringing a lot of negativity to the calls, but you know, there's, you got to fight and do something at some point or another for some kind of change. So what kind of negativity is it bringing? Just the resistance to being asked to leave by the police? 
Yeah, I mean, anytime you do that, you start to get yourself into like kind of like a powder keg situation, like, you know, is here. Um, you know, I support some sides of it. The other side, I think, you know, gets to the point where like enough is enough. And I, I think they're kind of getting themselves in trouble at this point. Now, how did it change the way you relate to government or to corporations or to your workplace? Did it have any impact and did it sort of encourage you to like, you know... Change anything? Yeah. I wouldn't say so. Um, I don't really find myself on either side of the fence. Kind of, I understand what they're here for and, you know, I applaud that. Uh, but on the other side, you know, I think... Um, you know, some things can be achieved by handling things a little bit differently on both sides of the fence. So how do you think it could be done differently? What's your suggestion for making things work and work better? Uh, if I had an answer for that, I'd probably be a really rich man. <laughs> or probably be on like some news channel. So I don't know, unfortunately. I don't know. Um, but everything's got to start somewhere. So if this is where it starts, then uh, you know, I'll get nothing against it. And, and you work nearby? I work a block away. A block away. And, yep. and, and have you been inconvenienced very often by what's going on? No, here? not at all. Mm -mm. What do you think? No, I think they're going to evict them in the middle of the night. That's what I think. And That's the, the way these guys operate. They don't want the light of day. They don't want the light of the camera. Yeah. No, you've got all kinds of press, and they're not going to risk doing that. So they're going to come back when uh, nobody's here except people that uh, are trying to espouse what Occupy is espousing. And what do you think the impact has been yeah, on Occupy? Uh, I think this is a societal game changer. I think this is the beginning of, of uh, what could be a, a, a real movement for change in this country. And, and appropriately, it's being led largely by young people, but not exclusively. So I think what, what you're seeing now uh, is the beginning. And there will be those that try to dismiss this as, as something that is faltering and failing. I would argue that every great movement has shaky first steps. These are not necessarily shaky, but they're finding their way. And they're not going to stop, I don't think, until they get what needs to be done. What needs to be done? We have to restore democracy. We have to uh, restore economic equity. We have to restore the rights of individual people to be able to live and prosper in this country. That's not happening now. That's being impeded by the large money interests that affect both the political process and the economic structure. They've eliminated opportunity and they've eliminated the opportunity for democratic change by controlling the economics. Now, somehow you sound like you might work for a union or something like that. Uh, you, you might proffer that and I might agree with it. I do. I work for the Hotel Workers Union here in the city. And how much participation in Occupy has there been from the union? Our members support this movement 100%. Our local union is on record as being in favor of what Occupy stands for. And the reason we are is because these folks speak for the 99%. And that's where our members are, and that's where most of the country is. How do you see this? What do you think is going to happen? What do you, what do you... Well, I don't know. That's uh, one of the reasons I'm here. I'm just sort of checking out uh, checking out everything that's going on, just uh, looking to see how it'll play out, if it'll be nonviolent or if it'll be aggressive. But let me ask you, what do you think the impact of the Occupy is? Well, I think it's... Uh, it seems like it's at least brought attention to the amount of discontent on uh, economic issues. I, I'm, I think that it, if nothing else, it's at least kind of shaped the dialogue. I can't say what the long-term effects would be one way or the other. So how do you think this dialogue has been shaped? Well, it, it brought a lot of attention to the uh, kind of dissatisfaction with uh, the rich-poor disparity. Now, were there any particular issues that were you know, dear to you that they discussed? Oh, I... Uh, Honestly, I, I've been kind of apolitical on the whole thing, just sort of interested more than more than really animated one way or the other. And do you work nearby? I, I do. How far? Uh, just a block and a half. And how inconvenienced or convenienced were you by this? Uh, I wasn't inconvenienced at all. I mean, my uh, the metro's over there. I, I was able to walk right by it. It was it was not really a nuisance. Uh, there there were a few homeless people who moved to that side of the street. I don't know what the uh, what the situation was, but as far as inconvenience, it, it seemed like if anyone was inconvenienced, perhaps they were. You're but, saying that it was mainly the homeless who were inconvenienced. As far as I could tell, it looked like that. But I I, I didn't really ask why they. Uh, some of the people who used to sleep in the park are, are sleeping across the street on the sidewalk now. But that's that's about it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, you, you should have compassion for the homeless. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, I have compassion. I, I know what it is to be under crushing student debt. I, I mean... Well, that was one of the issues. That the yeah, no, I mean, actually, yeah, sorry. I, that was one of the things where I really, I, I sympathize with that. Tell me how crushing it is for you personally. Well, I, uh, I actually went through law school, and so I have um, about $90,000 worth of debt, which is just staggering. And in this economy, it's, it's pretty dire. So I, I sympathize completely. It, ironically, getting a degree like that can in a lot of ways kind of restrict your career options just because you've, you've put so much money up front or, or borrowed so much money that you you can't afford to do certain things. So um, instead of opening doors like like everyone's told with uh, with a degree or with college that in a lot of ways it's, it's closed doors off from some of the less profitable avenues people may want to do. What kind of things would you have preferred to do? Well, actually, uh, I'm, I'm leaving my job within a, a few months to uh, go join seminary to become a priest, which doesn't, uh, doesn't pay very much, obviously. So, I, I was fortunate there that I, I found uh, an archdiocese willing to help subsidize some of that debt. But it, uh, I, I know a lot of people who, who want to help out and give back and who just feel really restricted in that way. I don't know what's going to happen.